The fifth wheel slider is here. Let's get it on there. Well, hello everybody in YouTube land. It's finally here from KK Truck Store. Um, first appearance, it looks really quite good. Um, yeah, very impressive. I have had a little um, twizzle around with this just to have a look at what's what. And a couple of things I've noticed that the clamps that hold it onto um, the chassis uh, locate into this little slot just here with this. But it doesn't just quite fit. in there it doesn't just quite fit so what I'm going to do first so it just doesn't fit I don't and if I tighten it down onto the chassis with the nut it's probably going to just bend um, this clamp bracket so I'm just going to zip a file just down there so it sits in comfortably and we'll see where that goes Right, that's uh, that's done on all four of those. And as you can see, there's a, a small pad on there, which I'm assuming go, well, it will go underneath the frame. And um, you know what I'm thinking. And now that, Let's get in focus, just fits in that slot beautifully now. Just like that. And that ensures that that, let's get in focus, there you go. And then that just ensures that when we put the nut on, it goes in. So I have noticed while I've been um, juggling around, that the fifth wheel handle or the slider handle um, catches on to there as the real one would. And that's brilliant. The original fifth wheel um, fits in these two just here. Now there's a lot of play, and I suppose I could take a lot of that out simply by probably tightening that up a little bit. Yeah, as long as it, you know, doesn't. I think they just all want tightening up that little bit. So yeah, that's uh, that's okay. Um, the nut poking upwards, and this one just here is a nice black um, head. So what I have noticed is that the the instructions that come with it. There's a lot of misspelled words and translation directly from Chinese to English, Chinglish as I call it, is um, not the best, but it doesn't take a genius to work out that this needs to be in this position so we can get to these two screws when we fit in the, the original kit's uh, fifth wheel. That's what these two were. Uh, rounded out recesses are, I would uh, have assumed. So I'm going to get that one off and see where this needs to be because I then need to get that. If that goes there into the original holes, which is there, I think that's sitting a little bit too far 
uh, forward and this I don't know I don't know whether to do it slightly forward of the center line of the axle which is there and, and I will be moving that back because I don't like it where it is. I'll be moving that um, back as far as I can. Right, let me get that off and then we can see where we're going to go with it. So, there it is. Um, that's not exactly centred to the thing. What I might have to rethink is when I took this... Um, stock coupler plate off obviously the coupler switch wire went through this hole so I just chopped a hole out because that's going in the trash and um, just looking at it there that's where it comfortably sits because this was originally this should be this way and the fifth wheel should be um, just rear of the center of um, that's where it should be like I said just rear but we we flip this around to bring it um forward a little more which brings it here so we've got a good inch and a half um reduction in the gap between the trailer and the cab uh, well that's the easy um option so i fitted that with um, braiding now I didn't have to disassemble this because obviously if I that's just laid on there slide that all the way back the fifth wheel actually goes through but if I wanted to have the fifth wheel as far forward as I possibly can that's going to put it right over here which that cable with the braiding on won't take because it goes through this cross member so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the braiding off there so because that's quite you know stiff and it's holding back so I'm going to have to you coil it up a little bit um, so the fifth wheel can move without this braiding um, getting in the way so that means tilt the cab unplug J12 luckily because it comes up out of the chassis I don't include it into the uh, wrapped uh, rear wires so I'm going to take that out I probably paint the wire black so it doesn't stand out so um, right let me do that because I'm going to put that as, as forward probably about an inch further forward than the original holes here I'll just re-drill and fit here for the servo coupler but yeah that's um, I think that's going to need to come out and um, let me turn that around so I can see just where it needs to be as you can see that needs to come um, I suppose if that comes above 
the frame then it might move so let me play about with that idea so that's really got a I don't like how that so I'm going to take that out and I think when that's up here where I think it needs to be and that goes on there <clears throat> Yeah, I don't think we'll really notice much of the wire going across the top of that uh, cross member. Um, I'll try and do a bit of clever wire disguising so not to ruin the look of that. Um, but I might fit this. Central with... I can think a lot quicker than I can uh, talk. So when that's on there, there's the two shocks. What? That's naturally st stopping there. So this bolt under here is actually catching that, so that might be a natural uh, resting point. And then the clamps that fit on these bolts here and here. Um, yeah, that might be a natural place for it to be. Yeah, because there's bolts there in the shock. So, let me... Uh, Take this out of the braiding and uh, BRB. So that came out a little bit easier than I was uh, anticipating. So now I don't have this. Um, well, I won't have because I'm going to take that off. I was going to just cut it off, but um, I didn't want to. Don't need that. So now. When I get where is it? here, put that there, um, that then goes, get it the right way, it goes on there, tuck that back into the frame rail, and that servo should. Um, actually help that um, help hold that loom that I've got in there so if I that's where it sits um, naturally there so then that has the ability to slide all the way back from there To there and then this can thread through there and then run down the side of the servo let me just move this around and get rid of that car now because I'm not going to scratch anything because I'm working on the front on the rear so that's where it sits naturally and I could if I wanted to move that forward so it hits there let's move you in Or leave that gap 
just here and that fits actually quite well in there rather impressed with uh, with that um, obviously I'm not fitting that just yet because that fits here we take these two nuts out and leave them out and just put some thread lock and clamp that down Oh, so those two nuts are not needed. And that's gone back to its bump stop. I think it's going to have to need to sit a little bit further uh, forward. Um, mm, I'm liking that. Let me turn it around. So we can see. I'm going to fit that to there. So whilst I was disassembling, and I'm thinking. Shall I take this apart? And um, I don't need to get rid of or, or disassemble that because I've done so many that I have accumulated quite a lot of um, pair of parts now you can see this one here as I might have shown you in a previous video has this channel where the fifth wheel mechanism fits and that has one of those in there and the fifth wheel switch fixes in that side on a stock build without any leg couplings or anything then we have this one which is a lot different a lot different and um, yeah I might just put a stock um, fifth wheel on there now this one I had anodized for the snowman truck right at the very, very beginning about eight years ago and I think I might use that one in there because it's black and then put all these back in uh, 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 in, into my spares box. I've got an absolute massive pile of spares um, in um, a 22, not two 22 litre boxes full. And uh, I'm just going to make up a stock fifth wheel with a hook it's got me about that so that now tilts backwards that can go on there let me get you a little bit closer so yes now I can put that there and that is free to slide as far forward as the middle of that axle to the middle of that axle so I am happy with that so this let's say this fifth wheel slider is from um, KK truck store and um, very fast delivery it only took a week and a half and I do believe from the UK they are an over um, an overseas seller so yeah um, because I've taken this one off I'm gonna have to bridge um, J12 on the MFC which just means take the lead strip a bit of wire off and twist them together so basically it's a short circuit it's it's, it's as simple as that it's just a switch um, I'm gonna use um, something 
different to that to uh, bridge J12 because I don't want to just cut the plug off for the sake of it. I think I have some um, JSTs somewhere um, from a different project. So yeah, that is now surplus to requirements. I'm going to drill that. I'm going to get that on there. So uh, yeah, let me get that on there and get that into the cab because that's just pretty boring stuff. And then that will just clamp on there. Still not 100% on that. So that's going to go there, just hiding those holes. Zoom in a little bit more. Just here in this corner, you can see that hole. I might just take that back so it sits there. So you can't see that hole. Fix that there. And then that will only go back as far as there. Will it fit further? Yeah, you can. It's these two bolts here. It's these two bolts that sit on top of this cross member. So it's either fit it there or jump those bolts, these, these two bolts here, over this cross member. I think that's too far back. Uh, for anybody's truck, so that'll clamp on there. Yeah, and if you go back too far, then you can't fit the clamps under here. So yeah, it's going to have to go in front, so you can uh, fit it in there. So that's where that's going to go. Um, What's this is a little bit silver to me. Um, a catwalk's usually silver. I might get um, a proper catwalk just to fit across there. I've seen one. Uh, I'll stick a picture up here of what I think. But that's not stay in silver that is going to be blackened and I think I have an idea it looked silly in silver Get the right screwdriver for the job. Because things are going to get interesting. Right then, we have an option paint it. declare some chemical warfare on it and we'll get some uh, cold bluing on it for gun screws and metal accessories I have a gun shop in Chesterfield and uh, I got some of this it's for the use for blackening um, gun barrels etc and it is um, dangerous and there is a warning that it's uh, harmful to fish and plant life selenium dioxide you toxic if swallowed or inhaled suspected germ cell mutagenicity uh, i don't know what that means i ain't a doctor but we need a um thing to put it in it's uh, three to one i think 
um, one part blue to three parts water. Immerse the parts. Use a small paintbrush. Blah blah blah. Um, I've used it before, so I'm going to strip this down, and uh, because it's got that 3D printed um, piece in the middle and in uh, there, so I'm going to strip this down. Right, let's use a ramekin to measure out three of these. I think it'll be enough to immerse these just a little bit off the top to That's like half a litre of water. Two. Don't know why I shot that, but I did. nearly half a bottle of cold blue just a little squirt for good measure rinse that out and uh, there's not much happening yet it's still silver i don't know what could go wrong if it goes wrong i'll just rub it down get back to the bare metal if it all goes wrong uh, i'll just order another one and learn your lesson i'll do it so you don't have to right see you very shortly update it's going to be a no-go for cold bluing stainless steel <clears throat> um, because it only does uh, non-ferrous sorry ferrous metals which um, although stainless steel is a steel it has a very low very very low carbon content so it's not going to go blue it's going to stay shiny stainless silver we might see some uh, staining like um that at the top just here but it, it, it's not completely devoid of um carbons it's just an extremely low carbon um, it only does steel things that are going to rust okay um right here we are a couple of days later because the friend that called blah 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 we had a conversation um and i never got back to the bench but what we did find out is that the cold bluing solution only works on ferrous metals and it doesn't work on alloys such as brass aluminium gold silver you know the, um, what i mean um and even though that stainless steel doesn't come under an alloy it has very little carbon content and it doesn't work because it doesn't work on stainless steel so i've blasted it with um etch primer uh for something for the uh, paint to bite onto and um i'm just going to hit this with the uh, black paint because i don't like it silver and um uh, i haven't got any black spray paint 
and it's going to have a trailer on it 99% of the time so I'm just going to put some uh, Tamiya semi-gloss black on it and see how it goes and there we have it it is uh, finished in black we're not going to see too much of the fiddle mechanism because it's going to be um, covered up mainly and that's that so those screws are not needed any longer and whilst we've been away while well, I've been away while well, you've been away um, I've centered the um, servo for um, the fifth wheel coupler um, it's not really needed on this because it's not got motorized support legs it's just something that I like to put on and that is going to go on um, there I'm going to set that so it's just forward of that let's get this on you can see the bolts just there this is gonna be fiddly well what can I say that was fiddly that was very fiddly but patience will always prevail and we will win that is the fifth wheel on now I'm just going to put a link cable between that servo this is just a piece of uh, braided line that um, I can just use to pull I might in fact I think I will I'll get um, one of those 3d printed um, ones that will come out the other side and I can just use that I can't use a straight rod because if it's a straight rod then that holds that in place and it you can't back under a trailer because that needs to move like that so I just put a piece of braiding on there for now that will change right I have decided that I'm not going to utilize the servo it's staying in place for two reasons one it is going to be a pain to remove it and the other reason is it's there if I want that option in future um, and I like this um, truck option part and I've got them on all of my other trucks so I'm going to keep this I'm going to disconnect the servo I'm going to fill in this um, hole just here and I'm going to put another handle on um, like this now I've seen them on <coughs> um, online that um, they vary between £10 and £10 and £20 I think for a little stainless steel handle um, I can't say I am particularly impressed with the price. This is the listing on um, eBay just for a handle and it's £20 plus £15 for the delivery but that is from outside of the UK and I'm thinking how hard can that be to make so I'm going to make one myself um, and I've got this um, nice uh, measurement just here this cutting mat um, this is a guy in California 
I've just took a screen grab. The screen grab is for a specific reason because I'm going to measure. I'm going to take off this fifth wheel, which I already have, and it basically goes between there and there, and it just levers. So I'm going to cut one of those out and as you can see on the listing it will fit um, either way around and I, I can measure the distance between there and there and it can go the other way around this one's the uh, MFC uh, fifth wheel as you can see just there so you can have it coming out of the uh, left hand side or the right hand side it's uh, entirely up to you there's the basic shape cut out needs a little bit of tidying up so this is how we roll I'll mute the audio so you don't get your ears burnt out coming on So there it goes on there, like so, or you can flip it around so it goes on this way. I like it. Now, with anything that you buy, there's always a catch and that catch will be that you're going to need something extra bear with me so this is the one that I'm doing now it all looks very good, just a straight fit, you think. But if I um, zoom into this a little bit, you'll see I've had to put a spacer under there because this side here is moulded and this um, brass part is exactly the right length to clamp the original um, hook to the plate so the bottom of this um, got one just here so the bottom of that actually st holds onto that plate like that and there's enough room for the for, for, the, for this to, to pivot but because we're putting this um, stainless steel um, fifth wheel arm on the um, 
on the original it's it's going to clamp it down so it's absolutely fixed solid so what i've done is i've got a longer screw that's countersunk it needs to be countersunk um and i've actually super glued that in place and then tightened it up just enough so it it pivots so let me get rid of all this so to basically that's all you do it doesn't pull out you know to release the jaws so I'm pretty happy with that so yeah the spacer under this side just here because if not it bends it down and if you do buy the stainless steel one it's not going to be very uh, forgiving and then you'll need um, a longer countersunk screw in there so it doesn't clamp that down and then lock it thread lock takes too long to set so I use um, super glue on instant thread lock so yeah that's uh, that's that so I'm just going to put that through there And this stupid little spring holds everything up. Oh my, giddy out. Oh, missed. That's the one. I've got a pointy thing when I need it. Right. Huh. I'm going to fit that e-clip. I'm not going to show you because it's going to be a lot of mumbling. And after the mumblings of some insane person, it's on. It's done and on. And that wasn't easy. Ah, oh, look at that. We have a handle. So if I try and slide this forward, like sliding it backwards, it drags this spring as you would expect but if I try and push it forward it catches so I'm just gonna lift that up as not to scratch it anymore so these things are not completely without the bit of a faffing around so I'm going to disconnect the servo and I'm going to fill that little gap in there right there's a handle uh, done <clears throat> I've put a bit of uh, paint on that to kind of blend it in with the, um, the other one I've just dotted this um, spring with a little bit of black paint just to take the silver off it same with this nut here and the same on the other side this little silver bolt here which kind of stood out and i've just dabbed it with a bit of black paint and the same with this um bolt head here because uh, i didn't like that so now i've um filled in 
this because I'm not going to use the servo. Um, it's just an option that I've put on there. Um, so it's on there. So uh, it's not so uh, blatantly obvious. of uh, masking tape that may have been trapped when I pushed the plastic in because it was quite um, quite a snug fit so I'm going to leave that as it is And uh, that is uh, what I'm going to call a day. So what I will do before I forget is to disconnect that servo that operates that. Because if I turn it on, that's um, going to... Uh, just push that straight out when it uh, comes back to being uh, central. I'm just going to get that back in there. So when I tilt the, the whole truck up, the cab just doesn't fall forward. So that is about ready for stickers I would say and let's bring in some kind of control yes always transmitter on first and then the model I'm going to try and find out if I can get that um, Yes, I quite like that a lot. And we have that uh, interior rocking on in there, look. That's pretty good.
that looks like it's finished so thank you for watching and um, the next installment is going to get some stickers on the doors on the front and I think I might get one on the back of the cab as well I've not seen any of the photographs of the back of the cab on any of these so I'm going to have a bit of a uh, look on Google to see if they've got like Ainscuff crane hire on the back there and um, yeah that's pretty rock and roll let's have a look at what um, one of those um, demos do so press and hold the lighting switch oh I need to put that up there so there is one and the next is slow and the next one is fast that's pretty cool the little lights up here as well yeah i like that um quite a lot so stay tuned and uh thanks for watching